what's going on worlds first of all you know it's a beautiful day here in texas which we don't have a whole ton of those in june even though it's just june one uh in normal years it's a bazillion degrees today and i'm doing something like crazy for my texas standing in my yard i'm wearing shorts which is super scary because when you're wearing shorts uh the mosquitoes can absolutely become uh vicious but I'm willing to do it because today um, something incredible happened over this past weekend that I couldn't believe and I think it's so profound that I wanted to share my thoughts on it. And just to catch you up, if you guys haven't heard about Naomi Asa uh, Osaka, who is a world-class tennis player. She's the number two ranked tenor, tennis player in all of the world. And I did notice this, like, and I didn't see it coming in a controversial way. But about a week ago, ahead of the French Open, which is one of the four major uh, tennis tournaments in the world, ahead of that, she said that she's not speaking to the press. She's going to go to the French Open, she's going to participate, she's going to play, but she's not going to speak to any reporters. And I saw that report about a week ago, and I thought, you know, maybe she's had like a controversy. I know she's like dating a rapper, so maybe something happened. Okay, so I don't pay super close attention to the news all the time so I just thought maybe I'd miss something that happened in Naomi Osaka's life that caused her to say like she's not going to talk to the news and um and then I saw this weekend that she did skip some of the press conferences that are mandatory for that event and as a result of uh skipping the press conference uh, they had fined her fifteen thousand dollars and they threatened to expel her from the event and then she she pulled out of the event and wrote this she contacted the organizers of the tournament privately all of this stuff happened uh and i've now learned that the reason that she did that was for her, her own self-care and she has bouts of depression and anxiety that she's been fighting for years and i saw that and, and, and i had two thoughts that i wanted to share here the first thought I had was, we should be ashamed of ourselves that we create a world where we force people to do things that are not related to the task. Like whether or not she speaks to the press or not is completely not related to the task of playing championship level tennis. And again, this is the number two ranked person in the world who is capable of playing championship level tennis. And we've created a, a situation where she has to do something not related to that um, or face very stiff and severe penalties. And the other thought I had was like, fame is, fame is challenging. Like, and I have a little bit of notoriety, like compared to Osaka, I've got like this much, but I've got a little bit of notoriety. And I was recently talking to my friend, uh, a friend of mine saying like, I have no idea how like Denzel Washington or Tom Cruise or, Naomi Osaka lived their life like I literally have no idea because people are constantly I literally have a team of people I have hired people whose job it is to filter all of the contacts that are people trying to get in touch with me and trying to reach me they literally their job is to filter the inquiries that come into my life via email and social media. I have more than one person that works for me that that's their job, is to filter the noise coming into my life so that only the really important stuff, only the stuff that I have to deal with uh, personally gets through. And, and I don't say that to brag, I say that to say like, and I'm just like a psychotherapist who's written a few books. What do you do when you're the number two player in the world in tennis? Or when you've got a number one movie or whatever? Like, I have no idea how these people live their lives. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't struggle with anxiety. Never really have. But I have struggled with depression at multiple points in my life. And if I had to, like, do a press conference before I went and gave a lecture, or if I had to do a press conference and speak to reporters before I did a therapy session, or if I had to do a press conference before I wrote a book, I would, I would really struggle to do that. And in moments in my life where I'm down and when depression is taking hold, I would experience it as impossible. How many of you out there have ever been so depressed that like just the thought of waking up in the morning is challenging? Like I cannot imagine being forced to speak to the world while I was in those like really deep depressive states. Like I just, I can't fathom what that must be like 
for this young woman um, to have to do that. And, and I am in awe. Like women, the strength of women, I am in awe that she was able to just walk away from this tournament. Um, because that, that must have been a really hard decision for her. That must have been something that she experiences as a challenge. And I, I'm in awe that she could just, that she could, she could walk away from this thing that she's, she's been working to do her entire life. Like it must have taken every bit of courage that she had. And I hope she knows that the entire world is watching her in admiration. Um, and, and also in empathy, like we're, we're sad that she has to make such a difficult choice and she was put into a situation where she had to make such a difficult choice. But I am in awe that she had the strength to make that choice. Like I put that in my own context. Like I've lived my entire life to get to this position where I am now, where I can write books and I can travel and give lectures as a keynote at different conferences. And like I said, it's the honest truth. If somebody asked me to give a keynote at, a, at an event, but before you do that, you have to stand in front of the press and give like, and, and answer a whole bunch of questions. Um, when I'm really struggling emotionally and, and, and with bouts of depression, I would experience that as impossible. And I don't know that I have the strength to just walk away from this thing that I've been working so hard to do my whole life. So the fact that this young woman had the strength and ability to just walk away um, I just, I'm in awe, man. And I really, wherever she is, I really, really hope that she can see that the world is in support and in, in admiration and looks at her as a, as a, just a, an amazing, amazing human being that was in a really difficult situation that she shouldn't have been forced into, but the way that she has handled it is amazing. And, and I think we need to reevaluate things in our life, things in this world that we have set up now where um, people have to make choices like this. Like she's got to choose between this thing that I do and I'm like born to do it. I'm one of the best who's ever done it. Like number two in the world, she's won grand slam tournaments. I mean, this woman is very, very good at this thing, but for her, for her own mental health, she has to bow out of it. I, I mean, I think we have to start looking at ourselves and asking like, what are we prioritizing here? Um, and we, we have to stop putting people in positions where just living life creates uh, damage to their mental health. Um, and like I said, I, I don't even know, I don't know how people like that live their lives. I mean, I have just a small taste of notoriety and, you know, s celebratory things. See, I told y'all the mosquitoes. Um, I just have a small taste of, of that kind of stuff. And, and fortunately I've been able to hire, hire a few people and they kind of help me deal with the traffic and the noise. But think about being an introvert and I am an introvert. People don't believe it's true, but it's true. I'm an introvert. So think about being an introvert and every single day I get about 250 emails a day. Uh, I get another slew of direct messages on social media. That's a lot of stuff coming at me. Do you think it impacts my mood and it impacts my ability to live my life. I don't know what I would do if uh, the people that work for me stopped working for me and stopped helping me handle all of that noise. Like, it's just impossible. And she, Naomi talked about, I say Naomi like I know her. Um, she said, if you look back at past experiences at my past showings at these tournaments, you often see me with headphones because it helps me deal with it. And I can totally appreciate it. Like if you guys ever see me out in public, I'm probably got, I've probably got my earbuds in, I probably got my headphones on and I'm probably listening to music because it helps quiet the noise a little bit. So, you know, when you, when you see people, just give them the best of yourself, give them grace because you don't know what they're dealing with or how they're dealing with it. And I think we need to like reevaluate the world that we live in where we're causing people to make such choices and uh, have such courage just for their own mental health. So uh, Miss Osaka, if you are watching this video or if you even hear about this, I just want you to know that I admire you. I can't believe you made that choice. Um, as a psychotherapist and an advocate for mental health, you have set a tremendously wonderful example on um, how people need to prioritize their health over everything else and how people need to tr prioritize their well-being over everything else. Um, I wish you had not been put in this situation, but since you had, I think you've handled it like a true hero. And um, I, for one, is someone who admires you. And I, I hope you don't have to continue to take cho make choices like this and you get back into the 
onto the tennis court and start kicking ass like you've been doing your entire life. And um, I'm one that thinks we should work really hard to, to just reevaluate the world and see if we can do things differently because I don't think people should have to make these choices. So anyway, that's about enough for this video. I can't stand these mosquitoes anymore. I'm not wearing shorts ever again in Texas. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, but in the meantime, do me a favor, guys. Head on over to my YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification so you get all of the, the video notifications of the video releases that I make. If you haven't done so already, like my Facebook page. Uh, I really appreciate your support. You guys mean a lot to me. Um, and it gives me a reason to keep sharing these messages. So love y'all. Big hug. And I will see you in the next video.